Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is an essay entitled The Gate of Liberation, Part 3. In the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we are given the picture of the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and Arjuna requests Krishna to place the chariot in between the two armies. Then, after seeing the soldiers and the kings and the other party, Arjuna becomes aggrieved, so much so that he did not want to fight, and he was crying. Now, in the second chapter, Dhritarashtra asks Sanjaya, then what happened next? Dhritarashtra was very much anxious. He said, Dharmakshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Bhagavad Gita 1 1. Now these two parties, Yuyutsavaha, both of them were desirous of fighting. Mamaka Pandavaschaiva Bhagavad Gita 1 1. One party is Mamaka, my sons, and the other party is Pandavas the sons of my brother, Pandu. Then the word is used, Yuyutsavaha, they assembled for fighting. This word is still used in Japanese for fighting, Jujutsu. Then what is the use of his asking, Kim Akurvata? Then what did they do? It is natural to conclude that when they assembled for fighting, they're going to fight. But why is Tritrashtra asking, Kim Akurvata? His suspicion was that because the parties assembled in the Dharmakshetra, the sacrificial field of Kurukshetra, they might have changed their minds. Still, in India, if two parties are fighting, they go to a temple, present their case before the deity, and ask him to mediate the conflict. This temple system still exists in the villages where people are faithful, and they do not dare to speak lies before the deity. So the misunderstanding becomes settled by the influence of the deity. No pious person will dare to speak a lie before the Lord, who, as the witness within the heart, knows everything. So Dhritarashtra was asking whether the two parties have settled due to the influence of the sacred place, Dharmakshetra. He did not want that. He wanted that these Pandavas should be killed and my sons, the Kauravas, should come out victorious so they will have no enemy. He was very much anxious to place his sons on the throne. Because Dhritarashtra was blind, he could not inherit the throne of the emperor of the Vedic Empire. His younger brother, Pandu, was given the throne instead. Now, after the death of his younger brother, he thought that I missed the opportunity of sitting on the throne, but why not my sons? They have got the actual right of succession. That is the background of this battle of Kurukshetra. Dhritarashtra was always devising some unfair means how the sons of Pandu, his nephews, Arjuna and his four brothers, could be deposed and his own sons would sit on the throne. That was his idea. Therefore he inquired, Kim Akurvata? What did they do? Otherwise, there was no question of asking Kima Kurvata. They went there to fight. So as warriors and men of honor and determination, naturally, they'll fight. But he suspected, what if they have made some compromise? He wanted that there must be fighting. And they are five brothers, and my sons are one hundred. So they should be killed, and my sons will be without any enemy. So this is the background of Kurukshetra, the battle of Kurukshetra. But the other thing is that Kurukshetra is a Dharmakshetra, a place of re religious pilgrimage for the Kuru dynasty from time immemorial. The effect of the Dharmakshetra was visible in Arjuna because he was a devotee of Krishna. Therefore he felt, what is this? Why shall I kill my brother, my brothers and my cousins? because he was a devotee. This sentiment came into the mind of Arjuna, but not on the other side, 
Duryodhana, although both of them were at the Dharmakshetra. The effect of the Dharmakshetra was manifest in Arjuna, not Duryodhana. This is the symptom of Arjuna's purity. If one is pure, then the effects of a Dharmakshetra become manifest very quickly. Krishna says, Naman duskriti no mudha prapadyante naradanama maya ya pahrita jnana asuram bhavam ashritaha. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are the lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Bhagavad Gita 7.15 Krishna says that those whose whole life is sinful, duskritina, do not surrender unto him. Kriti means one who has got good intelligence, but duskritina means the intelligence is misapplied in sinful activities. For pious activities, good intelligence is required. But those who are misapplying their brain for mischievous activities are called duskritina. So, naman duskritino mudha. Why do they misapply their intelligence? Because they are mudha, asses. If one has got a good brain, he should apply it for good work. That is called jnana kala. But a rogue also has a good brain, but he's misapplying it for mischievous activities, making other people unhappy. That is not the right use of intelligence. Therefore, Krishna calls them mudha, literally asses, donkeys. So the effect of the dharmakshetra, kurukshetra, was visible in Arjuna, but not in Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra's son. That is the difference between a mudha and a devotee. Huh? Therefore, due to the... Uh, force of the dharmakshetra, the sacred place, Arjuna was crying. Oh, I am put in such a difficult position that I have to fight and kill my cousin brothers, my nephews, even my own grandfather. He was too affected to fight. Although it seems like a weakness, it is not actually a weakness, but compassion. Arjuna was not a coward, but out of compassion, because he was a devotee, he was para dukha dukhi. The symptom of a devotee is that they are unhappy by seeing others unhappy. Generally, in this material world, if a person that sees that somebody else is happy, he becomes unhappy, envious, matsarata. That is the consciousness in the world today. If I see my brother is very happy, he has improved in his material condition, then I become unhappy, envious. Oh, he has advanced so much, and I could not do so. This is material civilization. People are envious, matsarata. Everyone is envious. Their sympathy is only lip service. Actually, everyone is envious brother to brother, wife to husband, neighbor to neighbor, businessman to businessman, nation to nation. This is material consciousness, envious, matsarata. Therefore, spiritual advancement is for people who are not envious. Vyasadeva says in the introduction of Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma projita kaitavotra paramo nirmatsaranam satam Vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapatrayon mulanam. Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kingba Parayar Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridyavarudhyate Trakriti Bhi Shushushibhish Tatkshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated, this Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God-realization. 
What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Srimad Bhagavatam 112. So in 